running at ring zero and ring uh, three, sorry, ring three of mm -hmm. the X86 architecture. Mm -hmm. The hypervisor is running at a layer down here. Nice. So this just to abbreviate hypervisor with the big H little V and then on top of the hardware right here. Okay. And this new layer we call negative one, which is, we call it negative one because it sits underneath ring zero, has full control of the hardware and can gate control even for something running in what's traditional ring zero. Hmm. And this is made possible with the virtualization assists that are in modern AMD and Intel processors. Excellent. Cool. And in the, might as well take this and talk, tell you about the, our, our uh, vir hypervisor architecture, which absolutely. is a little bit different than well, I, absolutely. other people's, if you want to cool. see that. Yes. And uh, basically, very simply, we've got the hypervisor here running as basically a substrate on top of the actual hardware. And we've got something that we've got uh, here, the root partition, which is running, running uh, this is rings, and this would be um, the virtual machine uh, management stack up in user mode, and then the kernel and toss and the HAL here, and then device drivers like I showed before, mm. and 132, 132. You can tell I don't write much anymore. No, <laughs> Everything's typing. Yeah, I bet. Um, Thinking and emails and papers. And this root partition, this would be served, typically would be server core. Ah, okay. Running the virtualization role. And this root partition basically has control of the machine. Mm. And that allows the hard the device drivers to talk directly through to the hardware from this from this partition of the machine. And then you've got other partitions, and you come across various names for these other partitions. I'll call them child partitions here, because they're really or they're also guest partitions. Uh, child one and child two, and then these are running their own ring three and ring zeros with their own operating systems. So if they're running Windows, they'd be in TOS and up here apps in each of these. Hmm. And they don't have direct access to the hardware because that would be a violation of the security guarantees that we're making around these child partitions. The, sure. the child partition can't take over the root partition, can't see into other child partitions, can't control other child partitions. And so the way that they interact with hardware, they've got virtual device drivers uh, and they talk through a virtual bus, which is really uh, something built on top of the hypervisor to allow communication between the guests and the routes so that the virtual device drivers can make requests of the real device drivers through this virtual bus, and then that gets into virtualization software inside the route, which then would redirect those IOs down to the real hardware. So the other architecture, the virtual hypervisor architecture of other companies, mm -hmm. which will remain nameless, mm -hmm. are slightly different than this in that their hypervisor runs on a full-blown OS with device drivers down here. And what that requires from them is specialized device drivers for this specialized operating system that they've got here. That also offers them the ability to go directly from their child partitions directly to mm -hmm. hardware devices just by going, going right into the hypervisor layer, whereas we've got a, this virtual bus communication where you go basically down and back up and down. Sure. So what we've done is spent a lot of time optimizing the performance of that path mm -hmm. to, to make sure it's really efficient. And even though there is a, a performance hit that you take for that extra path length, we feel that it's more than justified for a couple of reasons. One is that our hypervisors are very small and very thin, mm. which this, really you want this and the virtual bus communication interface to be rock solid. And the surface area that we've got here is minimized by us having this thin hypervisor with this virtual bus 
to ensure to allow us to be really confident that really the boundary that we put around your child partitions is really rock solid so that you get a malicious some malicious app here uh -huh. inside your child partition and it's not going to be able to poke a hole into the hypervisor or into the root partition Excellent. and allow it to compromise your whole server box. The other big advantage that we get is that these device drivers that you've got here to talk to device, the devices, the hardware devices, mm -hmm. are your native Windows device drivers. So we don't have any kind of special version of Windows that you've got to have special certified device drivers to run virtualized. These are just out of the box device drivers you're going to be able to run on this thing. Okay. So that's another advantage. And then finally, to manage the whole machine, this root partition is just, like, like I said, it's typically server core, although you could be running full server on top of there. And so you manage this thing with your, the system management tools that you're deployed throughout your data center. Basically, this is just another server box. And from the point of view of managing this software, it's just another machine. Cool. And so I guess, you know, being sort of a client OS person myself, uh, based on what I know, I mean, where does this pattern fit into to the client? So, I mean, virtualization can't get, obviously, into yeah. the details at all, but certainly there's, I see a interesting possibility um, architecturally. Well, so, the, I guess the question you're <laughs> aiming at is, yeah. do we, uh, is there a hypervisor on the client? Yeah. Or will there be? Is there be? plans? I mean, and uh, why, why wouldn't there be? We've definitely been looking hard at that. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't say one way or another what we're going to do of course at this not. point. But yeah. um, the question that you got to ask yourself is what scenarios really are enabled through virtualization? Yeah, that, that's a good that, question. That makes sense. And on a server, obviously, machine consolidation is a big one. Uh -huh. uh, there's other uses for virtualization on the server, like uh, the virtual desktop infrastructure for enterprises to be able to have users connect right to a virtual machine mm -hmm. from their desktop, uh, a la terminal server type connections. On a client system, the number, the kinds of scenarios that we've already seen people use virtualization for are, are basically test mm -hmm. and demonstration so that you can have VMs that go around sure. walking around with your client and fire up a server 2008 VM on your mm -hmm. Vista machine and test something or demonstrate something from it. Some of the other things that people get excited about when they think about client virtualization are, wouldn't it be nice if I had, uh, if, you know, some thin, redraw this, and so you got the hypervisor here and then you've got a bunch of partitions and one of these is considered your, your true Windows partition and then the question is what do you use for this other partition and there's lots of companies out there that have been looking at and talking about and promoting let's say that this is a man, the management partition or this is the AV partition hmm. or this is the, the telephony partition so this is where you would do your IP communications and the, again the question is what, do you, what software are you running in here? Mm -hmm. How much complexity does that add to your management of the whole box? Mm -hmm. uh, how much does that detract in terms of performance because just having a hypervisor here is going to cost you some performance and having this here all the time is going to cause you performance because this thing is going to have a memory footprint. Okay. Like I said, the management aspects of just this, like how do I update, how do I service thing, this thing, how do I make sure that it, it's secure mm -hmm. is a, another question. And then what am I delivering here that's not best delivered inside of here? Like what am I, why do I really want to move the IP stack into, or the IP telephony stack, communication stack into this, speci this separate partition mm. where I couldn't achieve the same thing with the mechanisms that are already in Windows. Sure. Or if I couldn't achieve the exact same things, are the costs of the management and the security and the servicing and so on and the resource resource requirements of this, having this over here, do they are they really outweighed by the benefit I get out of moving that out of Windows itself? So sure. those are the kinds of things we've been looking taking a really hard look at. Interesting. One of the sort of science fiction-y kind of ideas um, that, you know, I've had and might be just bullshit, which is fair enough, but would be to have certain components of Windows running in their own virtual machine, such that when Raymond Chen asks to add something new to the shell, you just download it and it yeah. runs. 
So 